semi-automatic is when you feel that this is not suitable and you need to move it for some reason. Or maybe it had actually, say, taken something like this and included those wires. Now notice, as soon as I moved it, the blue box went to green. And green means you've moved it, okay? And it, it changes as you select things. If I move it down here, and I was to say zoom in a bit, if I wanted to make it smaller because I didn't have much room, notice that it goes from thick green to thin green. In other words, that's ideal. That's okay, I'll do a good one from there. But if you keep going in, it goes down to thick yellow, which is saying, yeah, it's getting close, but I'll still do a reasonable job. And then thin yellow, which is saying, that's about as small as you should really go. I wouldn't go much smaller than that. And then red, which says, no, we can't really get a noise profile from that. It's too small. So it's just an, a, a bit of user interface feedback to tell you to get the best result you can, get as big as you can. So that would give us the best result, really. But once you've selected your own area, and again, you would be going backwards and forwards and just checking the noise. You can see, look, the difference it's making just going between those frames. 14.3 there. 14.4 at the end, so that's probably the best one. Once you're ready to go and you want to say, OK, I've built the noise profile I'm looking for, I can zoom back out again, you need to click the Auto Profile button again, and it will do the auto fine-tuning, so you don't need to worry about that. But you would click that. OK, it's actually saying here, notice it's 69%, but it's because we've probably moved it from a, a better area down here. If you remember, that was uh, near like 18, I think, from the noise level, and this is like 14.4. But it's still going to do a really good job and we can go back to the noise filter settings and we can see the end result from that. But what if you feel that you haven't quite got what you wanted and you haven't perhaps got the space needed to build a, a big noise profile and you're having to use areas that are something like this each time? Well, to build a different noise profile like this, I'm going to actually click cancel and, and, and reapply the whole effect. In fact, I'm going to reset the whole effect here. So it's completely reset and I'm going to go back and open up the box. So we've got nothing done, no, no noise filter settings, nothing applied. So we're going to build a noise profile. Let's say that we don't think we've got much space and we're going to have to use little bits and pieces to build the noise profile. So let's say I've got a small area here and I can click and drag till it's yellow. And I think I can zoom in, remember? See how big that is. Can I get it bigger? Probably get it bigger. 16.3, maybe take it down 16.5. So I'm building a noise profile from that area, okay? So once I've got my area selected and I know it's got no features, it's high noise, it might be very small and not ideal, I must click Auto Profile. And when I click Auto Profile, it turns around and says, there's a problem. Using a large area may produce a more accurate noise profile. It's recommended that it's 128 by 128 or more pixels. It says you can stop and manually select a large area or just continue building profile using the currently selected area. Now, I am going to carry on building the currently selected area and adding to it. But probably one of the, the easiest ways of doing it is at this point just to cancel out and go back to your video and go and find another frame which has got more visible noise. There may be another frame of which you can go in and get a larger section and then you don't need to bother with what we're going to do now. However, some video doesn't give you that option, in which case you do need to build a better profile. So I'm going to go into the advanced mode, so by going to the tools and advanced, and I'm going to explain some of the feedback that Neat Video is giving us at this point. Firstly, it's telling us about the noise. It's telling us that there is a lot of noise in the high frequency going down to very little noise in the low frequency. So it's telling us about the shot and the noise that's in there. This is pretty typical. However, there are always going to be exceptions. So don't get worried if it doesn't look exactly like this. But that's pretty good. It's showing us the quality is fairly low. Um, let's also look at this graph down here, which is telling us about what Neat Video has selected. Now, we're looking at the red, green, and blue channels at the moment. Let's look at just the red channel. So when I click on the red channel, I can see a node graph with a red line through it. And there is one big square, and there are some red field squares and some yellow squares. Let me explain what we see. The larger node is primarily getting its information from the actual selection that we've got. However, do bear in mind that when you click Auto Profile, Neat Video goes away and does fine tuning as well, looking at other areas to be able to fill the nodes in this graph. So these nodes are being filled from, particularly from here, but also from various other bits of the frame that Neat Video is automatically picking up with its fine-tune function. 
Okay, let's look at some of the other nodes. Obviously, yellow nodes are unselected, so we go to the green channel. You can see that we've got a good selection. This is the actual node selection here, uh, plus they're being filled with other fine-tuned nodes. And you can see that we've got very little in the darkest green. As you can see, these are the absolute darks and these are the absolute brights. In this range, we've got lots of selection, and you can see a trend is beginning. But in the lighter greens, we've got nothing selected. And the blues? Well, it's similar. We've got slightly more. Obviously, this is the big node pretty much in here. And these are the other ones that are picked up with auto fine tuning. We've got nothing in the absolute dark blues. And we've got nothing in the absolute light blues. But we do have a trend. You can see that these lines are beginning to pull down. I'm just going to show you that's beginning to go down. And that's beginning to go down. So what we need to do now is find another selection in the brighter areas of our shot. It might be quite small, but it might have usable data that Neat Video can add to these nodes to complete the trend. And this is how you do it. For example, look at the bumper of this car. That's got no features, and yet if I click and drag in there, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to move that around, so I've got a featureless area. I've got not a lot of noise in there, admittedly. 8.4 but if I now look at my channels it's showing me that I'm picking up blue on there how about green well I'm actually going to be picking up something new on green so I'm going to be adding to the green profile how about red yes I'm going to be adding to the red profile so I need to add this to my present one and that's what this icon here is manual fine-tune used to manually fine-tune current noise profile using selected image area and I'm just going to click to apply that and you can see we've got a trend going on. And you can do this for each one of these ones. And you can see on green channel we've got a trend going down, but these ones have not been applied. Now, do bear in mind I am working on a single frame of video here. It's quite possible to just simply click apply and then go away and make another selection from a different frame. So you take your playhead to a different part of the shot and then open up Neat Video again and choose a different selection and add that with a manual fine tune. But there is one little thing you need to be careful of, and that is that it's possible to make bad selections even at this level. For example, if I click and pull through just here, say I think that's a really great selection, and I go in there, it says, whoa, there's clipping in the R channel. And even if I zoom in and say, okay, I just want to make that selection, you can see that we're not going to get usable data because it's clipped in the red channel. Or I could select things like this, and it says it's ununiform. So areas are ununiform in the Y channel. So just be aware that you can make selections that are going to work, but you wouldn't necessarily choose them because, well, even though that doesn't say it's ununiform or there's a problem with it, you can see there might just be a little bit too much detail going in. So even though you're making selections, you will occasionally get feedback that says, nope, you can't use that as clipping or it's not uniform. But also, you can still accidentally select things. So just be careful when you make your choices that you don't bring in things that even though you get a green saying it's great, that's perfect, you're actually bringing in features. Just be careful at that point. So what you would do is you would keep going through and building up your noise profile for as far as you think is necessary. You don't have to overdo these because there is another button right next to the manual fine tune, which is this one here, which is called autocomplete. And when you think you're just about where you should be and you've got a trend going on, you can click the autocomplete button and it kind of moves everything into line. You can, by the way, you can even actually click on these and move these down if you wanted to. I'm going to undo that, but you can actually move them if you want to. So I'm just going to click autocomplete again. There we go. So that's actually applied and built the filter. So you can see in the blue, it's pretty much following a trend. Red, pretty much following a trend. And the RGB, all of them together. So that's from the very darks to the very brights. Now, while I'm talking about building and filling up all these nodes here, I just want to talk about the ability to be able to do this right at the start when you're filming. And if you go to the Neat Video website, and you were to go to the How to Use tab, Building Noise Profiles Using Calibration Target. Click on that, and you'll see that you've actually got this thing, Print Calibration Target Out. If I click on the color version, you'll see that you have the ability to film this, so you print it out and you film it right at the beginning. Now, obviously, you don't have to do this. This is just a suggestion and if you've got any control over the filming that you're doing, this is something that you may want to do if you think that you may have problems later on. 
because what you're looking at with this calibration target are featureless areas from very dark to very bright. And if you remember the nodes, the nodes go from very dark to very bright. So these nodes on this calibration target represent featureless areas from very dark to very bright. So if you film this right at the beginning with medium light in the environment that you're going to be filming your project in, then you can put this right at the beginning of your scene and you can build a noise target that's going to look at all these different nodes and produce an excellent result. And what you would do is use this as the frame at the beginning of your calibration. You click the build a noise profile or you'd allow it to look in this middle area here. And then when you click auto profile, Neat Video is going to look through the whole scene from here all the way through to here to fill in all those other nodes, all of these nodes, and then end up creating a really good noise profile. Now, as I say, you don't have to do this. It's perfectly possible to create a very good profile automatically from the frame itself. But if you have some control, why not print this out and spend a few seconds filming it in the environment at the beginning of your shot? And then if you change environments and you film in a different environment, stick this in front of the camera before you begin. And if you get to the habit when you do a white balance of putting this in front of the camera at the same time, you're going to be able to build up a whole series of noise profiles very quickly that's going to save you potentially time later on. Now, usually you're not going to have problems, but if you think you may have problems, this is a really good solution. So just bear in mind that you've got that under the how to use. If I just go back and very quickly show you, under how to use and then under building noise profile using calibration target. Okay, so I have now created a semi-automatic fine-tuned noise profile. Still says the quality is low, but let's look at the end result. Noise filter settings. That looks really good so far. I can still go in under my temporal settings and I can pull up the temporal settings if I like and I can take that up to say four a really nice look. If I really feel I need to do more, I can go into spatial and possibly turn it up. don't think it really makes much of a difference this one. I think I've really got a good end result. I don't think I need to increase sharpening at the moment. I think that looks fine as it is. I'm going to click apply and then it applies it back inside of After Effects and I can toggle it on and off either down here or up here on and off to see the end result. Now, one final thing to say. If I've got lots of effects here, and I start moving those effects around, you may need to rebuild your noise profile. So if you start reordering effects, of which Reduce Noise 4 is one of them, you may need to come back in and build a new noise profile to get the right result. But you can see, before, after, really good look. And if you're not completely happy, it's not sharp enough for you, you can always go back in, and I can click to Enable Sharpening. And there are lots of options under Sharpening, which I'm, I'm not gonna go through at the moment. Then click apply and there you are back inside of your application with a really good, very usable end result.